know you're out in the woods hiking on one of Florida's many trails and you see a snake. Not sure what kind of snake it is, but what do you do? In today's lesson, we will learn about Florida's venomous snakes, the habitats they live in, some ways to identify them, and we'll also learn about copycat or look-alike snakes. So whether you know all about snakes or you know very little about them, I hope you will learn something from this video. So let's get started. First of all, let's talk about some of Florida's snake facts. There are 45 native snake species found in Florida. Native means that they've always been here. Now we know that we have some invasive snake species, especially down in the Everglades, like the Burmese python and the red-tailed or common boa. They are causing havoc on the ecological system. Those snakes are not native to Florida. And of those 45 snake species or native species, only six are venomous. And we will learn about those species today. Whether or not you like snakes, we must understand that all native snakes occupy a valuable place in our ecosystem, whether they're venomous or non-venomous. Many snakes help control rodent and pest populations. And we know that these pests often carry diseases that are harm, harmful to humans. Some non-venomous snakes like the Eastern Indigo and the Common King Snake actually eat venomous snakes. Snakes are also important prey for food for many birds, mammals, and yes, the old alligator. Snakes are found in every type of habitat in Florida, including residential and urban areas. More urbanization is causing less native habitats for these snakes. Most snake encounters in Florida will be non-venomous snake species. Probably the most important thing that you'll learn today is that if you see a snake, just leave it alone and go the other way. So what does venomous actually mean? Well, venomous means simply that these types of snakes can strike and release toxins or poisons into your bloodstream. Sometimes the strike and they, the snakes strike and they do not inject any venom. This is called a dry strike. Non-venomous snakes will also strike, but they will only leave nasty puncture wounds. In this slide, we will compare some of the physical characteristics between Florida non-venomous and venomous snakes. Let's start with the shape of the head. When observing from above, the non-venomous snake usually has an oval-shaped head, while the venomous snake, they usually have more of a triangular-shaped head. However, don't be fooled by those non-venomous snakes. When provoked, non-venomous snakes can flatten their heads to look like a triangular shape. It's a defense mechanism saying, yep, I'm scary, leave me alone. Next, let's look at the pupils and the eyes. Non-venomous snakes have round pupils. And venomous species have elliptical shaped pupils like cat eyes or slits. Move your attention to the number three on the non-venomous snake. That's pretty to identify as its nostril. But look at the venomous snake. The number three by the venomous snake, you actually have a 3B, that's its nostril. And, three, and also a 3A. The 3A is the snake's 
facial pit. This pit is found on five of the six venomous snakes in Florida. These snakes are known as pit vipers. They use this pit as a heat sensor when hunting their prey. They can feel the heat of the little rabbit that they're chasing or the, or the rat that they're chasing. Notice number four on the non-venomous snake. The last scales are divided from the clochia to the end of its tail. But on a venomous species, the scales are undivided and lastly, many snakes vibrate the end of their tail when they're upset or, or being provoked. Three of the venomous snakes in Florida have rattles on the end of their tail. Also, most venomous snakes in Florida have, are large-bodied snakes. A few other uh, interesting facts are that all pit vipers give birth to live babies. They give live birth and they have some sort of black or dark mask or band from their eyes to the back of their head. Those are just some of the interesting facts about venomous snakes. The first, first of all, there's one of those venomous snakes in Florida that has traits more of a non-venomous species and we'll talk about that one in a little bit. But the first venomous snake that we're going to discuss is the dusky pygmy rattlesnake. This snake accounts for more venomous snake bites in Florida and snake encounters than any other venomous species. Mostly because it's small and not easily seen or heard. The adult only averages between 12 and 16 inches, so it doesn't get very big, about, about a foot, foot and a half. But it's a thick bodied snake with vertical pupils, facial pits, and a triangular shaped head. And it also has a set of small rattles on the end of the tail. It's gray, with, a dark, with dark blotches along its side and reddish brown stripe running down its back. The pygmy rattlesnake is found throughout the state of Florida with exception to the Florida Keys. Pine and hardwood forest, sand hills, and around lakes and ponds and canals are the variety of habitats that this snake prefers. They feed mainly on lizards and frogs and will tend to be aggressive. They will hold their ground if approached. Small, but they think they're big. The next venomous species is also the largest of the Florida venomous species the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. The average adult measures three to six feet in length, but the largest on record is eight feet. It's found throughout the state of Florida in pinelands, scrub, scrubs, coastal barrier islands, and sometimes urban areas as well. They prey upon rodents, rabbits, and other man mammals. The population of the diamondback has decreased because of habitat loss and because of indiscriminate killing by people and also commercial hunting. Do not approach this snake. It can strike up to two thirds its body length. So if it's a six foot snake, it can bite you when you're four foot away. And like all pit vipers, females give birth to live young and those newborns, those little snakes come equipped with a full complement of venom. So the little ones are just as deadly 
as the big ones. The Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. Our next species is the Timber or Canebrake Rattlesnake. These are two names are used interchangeably. They average three to five feet, but can grow to six foot long. They prefer low, fairly damp bottomland, riverbeds, hardwood hammocks, pine flatwoods, swamps, and cane thickets. Their main prey consists of rats, mice, rabbits, but it also eats birds, reptiles, and amphibians. These snakes are found only in the northern part of Florida. Timber rattlesnakes are beige or pinkish gray in the body color, and it's, the body color is broken by a series of dark chevron-shaped cross bands that run in a series across their bodies. A rust-colored stripe runs along the middle of their backs. <clears throat> the tail of this species is dark brown or black and ends with a large rattles. They are also pit vipers and they also have a facial pit or that heat sensor that they use when they're tracking their prey. So that is the timber or the canebrake rattlesnake. The southern copperhead is actually a really pretty snake, if you can think of snakes as pretty. It's a very thick bodied snake. It's generally light brown to gray. They have large bands of darker brown along their backs that appear as shaped like hourglasses. The average adult length is between two and three feet, so these snakes don't get huge. A young copperhead looks a lot like an adult, except their tails are bright yellow. A couple of things that they can use this, this bright yellow tail for um, is to lure possible predators away from the newborn snakes. And also, they can use it to uh, lure prey, uh, say a, a, a frog sees that little yellow tail, they could catch the frog and eat it. So those are a couple of ways that they use that little yellow tail. The, hop, the copperhead preys on small rodents and rabbits, but they also eat lizards, snakes, frogs, and birds. These snakes inhabit areas near rivers, swamps, streams, and ravines. In Florida, they have only been found in the Panhandle just west of Tallahassee along the Apalachicola River Valley. And again, these are pit vipers and you will find the facial pit and they give live birth. Southern Copperhead. Our next venomous species is the water moccasin or also known as the cottonmouth moccasin. It gets its name from its cottony white mouth that it will show you if you get too close to it. This is a defensive behavior. If that doesn't work to scare off the predator, usually the cotton mouth will flee from the threat. It's not aggressive. The snake is the most aquatic of the venom Florida's venomous snakes. It likes water. It prefers to live near rivers, lakes, ponds, and other wetlands. The average adult size is two to four feet, but can reach six feet. The moccasin feeds on frogs, fish, rats, mice, and other small mammals. A funny story I'll tell you about uh, a cotton mouth. Uh, when my husband was younger, he went out frog gigging one night and was wading through the water and as he was gigging frogs he would put a frog on the stringer and tie it to his belt loop of his pants and the frogs would just kind of go along in the water but you know falling behind him because they were tied to the uh, stringer after an hour or so he started to get out of the pond and 
He looked down at the string of frogs and only to find a cottonmouth moccasin attached to the end frog and was trying to eat it. Glad I was trying to eat the frog and not my husband's leg. So young cottonmouths are brightly colored um, with reddish brown cross bands and a yellow tail, a lot like the uh, copperhead because these are actually uh, relatives of each other. They're, they're, they're in the same family. But um, the tail is used to attract prey and also to uh, lure the uh, predator that's trying to eat the little baby snake away. The adult, so the young cottonmouths are brightly colored with a reddish brown crossbands. The adults typically are uniformly dark brown or black and they may have a faint or distinct um, crossband pattern. Okay, so the older they get, the darker uh, brown or darker, the pattern's darker with age. Okay, so that is the cottonmouth moccasin. Now, our last Florida venomous steak is much different than all the others that we've discussed. The coral snake is not a pit viper. It does not have facial pits. It is not a big bodied snake. Its head is oval shaped rather than a triangular shape. They lay eggs rather than giving birth to live young. And the coral snake is actually in the same family as, get this, cobras. The average adult length is one and a half to two and a half feet. They don't get very big. They inhabit wet hammocks, swamp edges, flat woods, and scrubs, and are found throughout the entire state of Florida. The coral snake is quite secretive, spending most of its time underground, most of its life underground, or under objects like logs and branches and trees. This, their prey consists of lizards, snakes, and frogs. These snakes are brightly colored with red, yellow, and black rings that encircle their entire body. The rings on these snakes go all the way around their body, even on, on, their, on their underside. The head has a blunt black snout followed by a band of yellow. The tail is black and yellow. That's an important thing to have that black and yellow, to know that, because that's um, in the next show, next slide I'm gonna show you, uh, you can distinguish that from another snake. So that is the Eastern Coral Snake. It's the only one that's not a pit viper, the only, uh, venomous species in Florida that is not a, a pit viper, okay? So don't be fooled by these snake lookalikes. Look closely at these two photos. The coral snake on the left has a color pattern, red and yellow touching. And the non-venomous king snake, scarlet king snake, on the right has the color pattern of red and black touching. So to tell the two snake species apart, there's a little rhyme. Red on yellow kill a fellow for a coral snake. Red on black friend of Jack. So if you see a snake that's red on yellow, you know that that's a coral snake and it has a black um, face with a yellow band. Then the king snake, you'll know it's a scarlet king snake if it's red on black and it has a red face. Okay, so that's one um, snake lookalikes. The next uh, pair that gets mixed up a lot is the pygmy rattlesnake and the eastern hognose snake. Look at these snakes. Their color patterns 
are very, very similar. They're a lot, they're the same size. They're pretty small snakes. Uh, the hognose snake doesn't get much bigger than um, a foot in length. Neither does the pygmy rattlesnake. Um, unless you, you look at their noses, you see the hognose snake has a very defined uh, almost snout like a hog. And the hognose snake comes in various color uh, variations, um, but it does not have that red or brownish rust red um, streak that runs down um, its back. Okay. And finally, these two snake lookalikes are very hard to um, tell the difference. The cottonmouth moccasin and the banded water snake. They're very hard to tell the difference unless you're really close to look at their eyes and their heads. So there's a video at the end of this um, presentation that, that shows you really close up how you can tell them apart. But your best bet for water snakes is if you see one, you go the other way. That's how you tell them apart. Don't worry about it. Just go the other way. So, what to do if you see a snake? Well, you leave it alone and go the other way. The snakes have a job. It's not to bite anybody or to scare anybody. Okay? They are a vital part of our ecological system. So if you see a snake, you're not sure what kind of snake you found. There again, just leave it alone and go the other way. So what to do if you or someone you are with is bitten by a venomous snake? First, you want to stay calm and then seek medical attention immediately. Do not try to catch the snake. Just try to get a good look at it so you can describe it to the doctor once you get to the hospital. It's very important that you get to the hospital immediately. So on this slide, there's listed some really good videos for you to watch to learn even more about Florida's venomous snakes. So, um, these are very good, so I suggest that you take, uh, they're not very long, uh, suggest you take some time and watch them. Um, you might. <music>